<laughs> oh, check this out, guys. This beautiful mountain stream. What is going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Southern Series. Out here today with a subscriber, Aaron. Very excited to fish with Aaron today because he is going to show us a rare type of fishing. I didn't even know it existed until I met him. So here's the story. Over a year ago, I was just out exploring this river and I just happened to run into Aaron and his friends. And he's like, you wanna go fishing? And I was like, sure. So went fishing with he and his friends for about an hour, but it was getting really late. They just fished for a little while longer. We didn't catch anything, but he's like, we should meet again and I'll show you some epic trout fishing. So we're in the mountains right now and he's gonna, he, he, does, he does some crazy cool stuff. We're gonna get up to the, uh, we're, we have a little hike ahead of us. We're gonna get to the fishing spot and then I'll show you it appears that he doesn't have a fishing rod and reel with him yet, but he has something on him. This is crazy. Just just follow along. I'll show you guys. Right? Excellent. All right, guys. So I've never been to this uh, spot before and uh, very excited. We are we're pretty deep in the mountains and it started to rain right as we got here. How long of a hike do we have? Uh, about maybe a mile, mile and a half max. Okay. About a mile hike up this trail to some really cool trout fishing. Wait, what is that? All right guys, uh, I did fail to mention that we're doing mushroom hunting too today. And check that out. So Aaron mushroom hunts, and we're hoping to get some today, but um, he's he's not an expert. And of course you guys know I'm, I'm just starting my mushroom hunting adventures. He only eats a few species that he absolutely knows. Wouldn't you say that's accurate? 100% know these two that we're going for. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, because you have to be very careful mushroom. You can you can die uh, right right in the forest even from eating the wrong mushroom. But we're going to keep our eye out for, what are the two we're going for? Uh, chanterelles and black trumpets. Sweet, sweet. Chanterelles, black trumpets, if you're a mushroom hunter, you know what those are. If you don't know what those are, you'll see in a minute. Guys, it, this is just amazing. It started to rain right when we got here. We got this like bridge that we're going over and uh, believe it or not in these little creeks and streams the trout are in there oh man dude i love this kind of stuff <laughs> it's awesome man this is this is my home <laughs> <laughs> what do we get oh yeah those are puff balls oh sweet you know, could you grab those two for my sake and throw them in there i have eaten puff balls now that is one mushroom guys i am familiar with i'm still a total newbie but uh that's one I'm familiar with. And check this one out. That one looks like something like, and you can kind of see through it like that. Something poisonous. <laughs> yeah, usually the white mushrooms I try to steer clear of. Uh-huh. Okay. All right, guys. So believe it or not, that little puddle right there, that little pool, Aaron said he thought he saw some. All right, so explain to the folks this type of fishing you do. This is Tenkara. It's the traditional Japanese style of fly fishing. There's no reel. It's just a fixed line on the end of the rod telescopic if I can get it to come out here you got your lily in here just a simple little knot there tie your line to the end telescope it out you're good to go so Aaron told me he had a long fishing rod check this out guys <laughs> how long is that 13 foot 6 inches 13 foot long and that way he can drop it guys it's perfect for these creeks and stuff like that because he can stay far away from the trout right and you can drop it right They're in front of their super feet. spooky so i just kind of dip it down i'm not going to fish at this length because of all the brush overhead okay but i can just kind of bring some sections down i have a shorter line and down to that so this is a sakasa kabari there are several types of kabari but uh this one will have like a reverse hackle oh, what, what does that mean um see the little feathers here they're actually pointing the opposite direction. Most oh. traditional Western wet flies, the hack will be facing the opposite way. Oh yeah, yeah. But this way, it'll kind of splay out in the water and mm. it can it can imitate a lot of things. Okay, cool. So he can, there's that pool right there. He doesn't have to get right over top of the pool. He can, uh, this is this is insane fishing to me. This is so cool. Oh, look at, what the, dude. I didn't know that's, oh, dude, you had it right. Guys. Oh shoot, he got caught in the tree. But he, he told me about a slingshot cast. Okay, sorry, I need to be quiet here. He did a slingshot cast. Missed him. Missed him big. Let's see if we can get, he can get it to bite again. Guys, that was instant. Like, it hit the water, and that trout was on. I saw his line jump. That fish is done. 
Okay. <laughs> Dang. All right, guys. Well, <laughs> he got a bite. He got it to bite a couple of times, but it, uh, it, that's that's about all you're gonna get with the trout. That is cool, though, dude. I had no idea. Like he was explaining it to me, this type of fish, and I'm like, cool. I guess we'll see how this turns out. That is that is super cool. Check out those red mushrooms. Ooh, that looks like something poisonous for sure. All right, guys. We got tons. We have miles of stream to fish. We're just looking for more little holes and pockets like that. Are they? Oh yeah, yeah. One hundred percent, guys. Big puffballs. Now, that's interesting because this one feels like hard. Yeah. I know there are a couple different types of puffballs. You know, we'll throw those in the mushroom bag and uh, and. That is witch's butter. Witch's butter. Those are edible, but they taste like water. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we'll eat these or not, but we are in mushroom country, so. We're gonna throw those there. Dude, there's stuff all over. I don't what? know what that is. <laughs> Anything we don't know, guys, we are not eating. But if there's some mushroom hunters walking, watching this, you'd help us. Comment below for sure. If you if you recognize something that we don't. Hmm. Little red toad right there, guys. Not big ol', he's a little tight. It's kinda cool. Huh. You know, yeah, I might do that. Okay, guys. <clears throat> All right, so he has this. Uh, I'll show you up close because I know I'll show you up close. Aaron's setup. I know a lot of people are gonna be like, he's just using a cane pole. He's actually not using just a cane pole. So, first of all, he's using flies, as you saw. But then he has a four-pound leader and specialty line. I noticed that line refuses to get tangled, no matter how much you like. Like when you whip it, sometimes the line gets in a big mess, but it falls right out. Sometimes you'll get some wind knots if you're fishing like really open stuff, but for the most part. I don't yeah. really have that, that issue. Uh-huh. I don't know what this is. Guys, it almost feels like it's fabric or something like that. It's a really crazy feeling. But yes. it just, it does not get tangled. It refuses to get tangled. And then this telescopic um, rod here, he can easily just, he can have it up to 13 feet or he can have 3 feet. He can poke it down deep into places and jig, um, you know, jig a little fly and catch something like that. It's just, it's actually way more advanced than just like a little cane pole or something like that. It's a, it's Japanese, ma they have like Japanese master fishermen who do this, right? Yes, um, they'll, like I said, they kind of just skip the whole match the hatch scenario. They'll, they'll use one fly for 30, 40 years. They might change every once in a while, but most of these masters in Japan will tie one fly. And, That's crazy. Um, they still catch fish all the time. All right, guys. I'm just doing a little bit of night crawler on a hook. So, oh, see that? There's a trout. There's a trout right there. Dude, I just spooked it. Spooked one. Oh, got it. He came right out. He came right out. Oh. That's a that's a good one. Dude. Nice. That's actually a rainbow. Oh, it's a rainbow. And there's no size limit on these. No size limit on the rainbows. Okay. So guys, this sounds crazy, but do you, what do you think? Should we eat this? Like, I, you said you catch pretty small fish up here. I'm yeah, I would I would take all the rainbows possible out of here. Okay, why is that? Um, they just kind of outcompete the native brook trout. Ah. They're, they're faster, stronger, they get bigger. Okay. Um, guys, we're, we're fishing for kind of a rare, would you say that it's a rare trout? Or, or at least it's been... It's technically a subspecies. A subspecies of trout, okay. Subspecies of brook trout. Which, I don't know if you say it's rare or not, but... Um, it, they're only found around this area, and uh, so that's why we're keeping a ra little rainbow like this. But there you go, my friends. First catch of the day. All right, just kind of rinse them off in the cool water, and there we go, folks. And yes, guys, we are eating a trout this small. That's this type of little river, little creek fishing like this is what people do. Eat trout like that, you just eat them whole. Just throw them in the frying pan like this with some butter. And of course, we're also trying to gather some mushrooms. So. The goal is to get a trout and mushroom feast going on in the forest. What is it? What do you think? That right there is a chanterelle. All right. One tiny guy, but... Well, we're on the right path, you know? Usually, we like to grow in lines or groves, so if we kind of kick over some leaves, we might find some more around here. Okay. Right in that little waterfall right there, folks. You got him? Got him. Oh, shit! That's a rainbow. Oh, dang it! That was so cool, guys, right in that waterfall. I saw your line just... Ah, oh, dang it. Oh, no. <laughs> dang it! That would have been so... 
<laughs> devastating, my friends, devastating. Oh man, Aaron had a nice one there. This is so cool. It's, I don't know, honestly, folks, I don't know how the trout get up the stream, to be honest, but they just travel up. Oh, look at this pool right here. This is a big pool. Yeah, yeah, guys, there's a leopard frog. Oh, 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 he's fast. Oh, leopard frogs are lightning quick. Okay, okay. Let's see. Oh, oh, he slipped right through my fingers. Dang it. Where'd he go? He gone. I think he went over the edge. Shoot. Man, they are fast. They aren't like the old bullfrog. Ah, that would have been cool. All right, so Aaron's out for a little redemption at this spot right here. Dude, how you cast that? Holy mackerel, because there are trees and snags, and somehow he flicks it, right? Oh, <laughs> I jinxed you. I totally just jinxed you. Otherwise, how you cast that is insane. I can tell you spent hours doing this. Was that one? I think I might have had a tape Wait, is that a chanterelle? Wait, did I just find my first chanterelle? It came out of the soil. Um, what do you? Well, you're the a mushroom. You're. What do you think? Looks a little yeah, flat. It is. All right, guys. I just found my first mushroom. <laughs> Sweet. Nice. Nice. My first mushroom. It's a small one. You know, they get a lot bigger than this. But hey, it's something. Is that? Is that okay? I thought that might be. Guys, we have another one. That's a big one. That is a big. All right. All right. So maybe up this little like path here. I gotta figure out how to get up here. Growing lines. They'll grow in lines? Yeah, they kind of like huh. pull down the hills and stuff and across pathways. Oh, it's so soft. Look at that, guys. This is cool. All right. It's, it's, this one's really, like... This might be a little past its prime. A little it's like old. Gelatinous right there. Ah, uh, shoot. Okay. Just past, man. Darn. Okay. We'll keep looking. By the way, if you guys are wondering, Aaron and I are both packing heat because there are a lot of animals out here so he's got a pistol I've got a pistol I always get asked that people are like you go in the mountains and not oh found another one right here it's like I always look at that found another one dude oh and there's another one right there now this one is looking a little like it's been eaten or something too I don't know if that's that should be okay that should be okay well, you know we can always try like I, there's another little one right here this one is I don't know. This one's nice and firm. We can always pick those parts off. Okay. They still got that firmness. <laughs> Maybe we throw them all in there. At the end of the day, we decide like that what we want. That's actually a false. Oh, that's a false. Oh, <laughs> guys, I'm trying to throw a, a toxic one <laughs> in there. See the difference in color. Oh, okay. And also, they have actual gills, even though they've been destroyed by something. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see that. Oh, I can see that now. It's like big gills on them. Okay. That's one really cool thing about them. Look at that. Ooh, yeah. Oh, that's a nice one. Okay, guys, you can just tell how perfectly formed it is. I'll see more up there. Yeah, we got a lot of them. All right, I'll, I'll just keep a handful here. Oh, this is so cool, guys. You got one there. Aaron's got a nice. That one's perfect condition. That's a good one. Yeah. Nice and firm. Cool, dude. I'm going to add mine here. Guys, look at that. We're getting little handfuls of mushrooms, too. Forest food. Oh, big one right here, bro. Oh, two of them. Oh, three of them. all. Uh-huh. There you go. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, we got them sneaking. Not sneaking. <laughs> Mushrooms don't sneak. Hiding. Hiding under there. Yeah, that's looking like a good one. Oh, dude, another one. Oh, man, they're everywhere. Or is that? Something's been nibbling on that one. Like an animal or something. A bug. Maybe a bug's been nibbling on it. Oh! What is it? A yellow jacket? Oh, dang, dude. Oh, oh shoot. Yep. Uh oh, oh we got a nice stand there. Yeah. Oh, dude, there's a nest of them. Oh, oh let's get out of here. Oh, 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 guys, we got a yellow, uh, nest of yellow jackets. Oh, oh, oh. We're gone. Right oh, man. We're out. We're gone. That was fun while it lasted. Dude, a whole yellow jacket nest in the ground. You okay? You're not allergic, are you? No. Okay. I'm gonna do a little Native American trick. Oh yeah? To get the pain away. Okay. So, it's got stung right there. Uh-huh, okay. Native Americans used to 
wet tobacco. I'm a smoker, obviously. Mm -hmm. So I'm just take a little bit of tobacco out of my cigarette. It's like wet. A, okay. Just kind of spit on it. Yeah. Oh man. The tobacco draw out the venom? Yeah, it'll kind of pull the venom out. Interesting. <clears throat> wow. Didn't know that Ooh. trick. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Man, I've been getting stung and bit for the past couple of weeks like crazy. Mm, well, there, there's a lot of crazy stuff out here. Guys, we both, as I was saying, I, I think I stopped, but they saying earlier, we both carry guns too, because we're, we're in the mountains for sure, and there are a lot of things out here, so got, we're, oh. we're double barreling it though. So. Dude, check what is this it? pull out. Oh, that's beautiful. Check it, oh, that's a big deep. Now, this could have multiple fish in it, guys. Grab that, yeah. I'll grab it. Alright guys, we're gonna get this out of the way so he can so he can work. <laughs> that is so cool. Oh, oh got him! Got him! He's got him, guys! Nice! Nice! Nice book trout. Nice, dude! <laughs> Let's, go, <laughs> Let's dude. go. And I saw another one in there. I don't know if you saw the one take off. Dude, that's a nice one. Uh, that is a nice brook trout. Dude, nice job, man. That's, <laughs> this is so cool, guys. Like micro stream fishing. So how big do these have to be to keep? Seven inches. Seven. And I think he's gonna make it. All right. For sure. Turn around here. Oh, that's beautiful, dude. Oh, Look nice. Southern Appalachian brookie. Cool. Little tape measure. All right, guys, got to see if he's big enough. It has to be over seven inches. Oh yeah, he's. Oh yeah, he's like eight and a half. Mm-hmm. Almost nine inches. All right. Perfect. Keeper. Second keeper of the day, ladies and gentlemen. All right, guys, he's going for the upper pool now. We can't. We couldn't get connect in this pool. We tried a whole bunch of casts. Couldn't connect anything. So no, you got him. Oh, dude, that was sweet. Stuck in that tree now. You're stuck in the tree, dude. How you cast that thing is insane. <laughs> like when you you got it right in the waterfall, and that trout just go. That was another good one too. For you know for the stream, that was another eight or nine incher. Because, <laughs> like, wow, I could tell you spend hours doing this because the casting, it's like bow and arrow. This this is su super cool. I've never seen anything like this. So Aaron's water got warm so he's refilling it in the ice cold creek here and then he attaches that life straw to the top which filters it all so he literally just got creek water and that way on these long hikes he doesn't have to carry around like two gallons of water with him and we can just <laughs> he just drink straight out of the creek that's crazy dude <laughs> oh, nothing better than that man uh, ice cold stream water it's safe to drink all right, let's hit the road. Oh, here's, oh, is this the one you're talking about? With a, with an actual waterfall, oh, I think. Here we go. Yeah, this is the, all right, he told me, this is like his favorite one here. Oh, yeah, yeah, up there, the big one. That's a big, big pool, all right. Oh yeah, folks, we are definitely gonna be looking for some crawdads in just a minute, but first we're gonna focus on a few more trout. I've seen a bunch of crawls right through here, plenty of Yeah, they're, the, the rocks are the perfect chunk size for crawfish but we're gonna fish first and then we'll get to that oh yeah look at this gorgeous pool right here my friends I've been holding it at that section there okay because it's a short line if you have it fully extended that fish will just fly off of there okay so so just barbless hooks so okay so always maintain tension and you just grab it like this you can oh dude it's so light I can't I didn't know how light this rod was that's nuts here we go guys Oh, oh, <laughs> that was weak. Weak. All right, here we go, folks. Back a little more. A little bit more. And then just... Whoosh. Nice. Oh, that's cool. Perfect. I would say it's safe to say there's not a fish in there. Ah, dang. Darn. <laughs> try again. That was cool. I'm not sure clean this bad boy. Could you show me on the tongue of that? Yep. Guys, he said there's teeth on the tongue of the fish. I'm gonna see this. There are little teeth. Can you see that right on the tongue there, guys? That is crazy. 
little almost clear tea. These southern Appalachians are really pretty year round, but when they get in the fall spawning, they are really pretty. Oh, look at that. What is, oh, dude, is that a bee? That's a yellow jacket. <laughs> Guys, he ate a bee. <laughs> A little bee right down in its gut there, guys. Wow. <laughs> That's we cool. Need, we need to use a yellow and black pattern. Because we were talking on the drive over here about how good the Panther Martin yellow and black spinner is. And uh, that's a little clue why. Interesting. So he just threw the guts in the string here. And we're going to throw the guts to try to like bait some crawfish up. And then we're going to go right down there in the pool. Oh, under those rocks, we're going to see if we can pull up any crawdads. All right, let's look for some crawdads here. Cave spot right here. Yeah? Right here. Ooh, another chanter. Oh, several. Little like cluster of them. Oh, I see another one right here. Looking around. Yes. Yeah, okay. There you go. <laughs> nice. What is this? It looks like. It looks like coral. Coral fungus. Coral fungus? Okay, I was like, it looks like coral. Is this, uh, do you know anything about this? I don't know much about them. Huh. You know, I have a mushroom, let's throw that in there. I have a mushroom hunting book okay. in the in my truck. When we get back to the truck, I'll look it up because that is too cool. Dude, nice! <laughs> cool. That guy's just right along the path. Throws in there, beautiful little brook trout. Oh, that is gorgeous. Nice, dude. That is hilarious. He was like, yeah. Probably not a keeper there, but. No, we're just gonna throw in. Like, we're just headed up this path, folks. And he's like, let's just drop a line in. Since I'm releasing him, I'm gonna keep him in the net and get my hands wet. Okay. They have really delicate flesh. Mm. There's also more chanterelle right here in the path. Oh, yeah. Look all around your feet. Look at that, guys. <laughs> Chanter There's treasure everywhere. Yes. Good mountain treasure. So I gathered a couple more. These are, we're getting into some ones, guys, that, like, they're the ones you want, you know. Beautiful, that's a small fish, but super fun to fish for. There she goes. Right down the little pool. <laughs> Aaron is now fishing right underneath that giant boulder. He says they a lot of times like to hide right in those spots. The old bow and arrow cast. Just, he's gonna get far back up under there. Cool. Alright guys, this spot has to have one. It's got. Got him. Dude, I saw him come over and take it. Whoa, flying fish, folks. <laughs> that was hilarious. All right. Nice, dude. Sweet. My first brook trout. This guy's gonna be probably too small to keep here. Oh, look at that beautiful fish, my friends. Oh, that is so cool. I was using like, I don't know, a sixteenth of a worm or something there. Oh, look at that beautiful fish. That is so cool, man. <laughs> Thank you yeah, for getting me on this. <laughs> guys are small fish, but they're gorgeous. And this is just, this is the ultimate adventure fishing. Go wherever he wants to go. Mm -hmm. 
There he goes. Yep, he goes right into the rock there, guys. <laughs> That's cool, man. All right, guys, so we let the spot rest, and now Aaron's going to try it. We went back. We left our stuff way down there, tried to keep it as light as possible. I better be quiet. Um, anyway, he's going to flip it right there, see if there's another one in that pool. Dude, nice. <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> that was really cool. Just whoosh. Oh, that is cool, man. Hey, guys, it, it, was it still on the surface when you saw it? Yeah, he actually made a little splash. <laughs> nice. Wow. The fins are so cool. Man, what a beautiful fish. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is back down river now. We're gonna hit some of those big pools and stuff that we saw multiple fish in earlier. Kind of let them settle. We'll go back down there, see if we can pull out some more. As well as keep an eye out for more chanterelles. I mean, they're, they're probably, this force probably filled with them. What is that one, guys? Can anybody identify that for, for us? Hmm. Bunch of them. This is it. Alright, All right, guys, so Aaron said last time he came here he found a ton of black trumpet mushrooms and he said this is, he was trying to figure out the spot and he just remembered the spot. Look at this, guys. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. And another one. Oh, dude, look at that. Look, there's a hive of bees right there. You oh, see that? No. Oh, that's creepy. That's creepy. I don't know if we're gonna climb up this hill now. Yeah. Maybe we. Maybe we save that for another day. We've had a good day so far. Yeah. And it's getting close to supper time, guys. We were to climb this hill, but if there are all kinds of yellow jacket nests, like all it takes is to step on one of those and like. Like, we're having a bad day. Fortunately, the ones earlier, I think because it was raining, like, didn't really follow us, but that could change. So we're kind of packing up here, guys, to head back to the truck. And uh, Aaron has this cool little wooden spool here. And you just reuse that same line over and over again. Mm -hmm. That's so crazy, guys. The line feels like, like it's fabric. It's some sort of braid, like multiple braids together. And it does not tangle. It... Every, he, all he has to do is give it a little shake and it's like all, this, all the tangles fall right out. If it wasn't so visible, I would string up all my bait casters with it and never have a bad tangle again. But you'd have to put a little, uh, little four pound leader on there. Well, that's crazy, man. You just can slip that right back and back. Heck, guys, like this is, you say hikers and stuff use these. A lot of ultralight backpackers, like through hikers on the... Appalachian Trail, Pacific Crest Trail, um, a lot of bike packers, as they call them. And they can just, um, oh, yeah, that's all you need. You're ready to fish just with that little set. Super light, doesn't take up a lot of room in your backpack. And uh, you need a couple, all you need is a couple of flies, so you need even need to worry about carrying around bait. That's super cool, man. I can't remember what these are called, but I think they used to be used as like a medicine. Whoa. That's a crazy, oh, oh one of them. Big like shelf mushrooms or something, fungus, fungi, huh? Hmm. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> dude, are you kidding me? That's probably the smallest what? trout I've ever caught, dude. Whoa! I don't, guys. I think we'd have a record, a record tiny trout. What's that? One inch. One and a half inches. I've got to get a picture of yeah, this. Yeah, you need a picture. Like, that's 100%. You caught your PB today. Yeah, man. <laughs> Personal I've best I've literally moves. never caught a trout that small. <laughs> I've caught some really tiny ones, but that... That... <laughs> way takes the cake. I'm glad I got that on camera, guys. Aaron caught his personal best, smallest. Or would you call it personal worst? Or personal worst. Oh, yeah, you know, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my friend's back at the truck. All the windows are still there, so that's good. 
<laughs> and uh, we're gonna have something, guys, for the first time in channel history. A subscriber's gonna cook for me. And so Aaron has this special recipe. Well, you'll just see, you'll just see. But it's in keeping with today's Japanese fishing theme. Of course, got some okay. wonton soup base. Wonton soup base, all right. Chili oil. Some soy, soy sauce, sauce, of course. Can't go wrong with soy sauce. We have an Asian theme coming here, folks. We even have chopsticks. Oh man, this is cool. Got some rice noodles. Got some nori seaweed to seaweed. crush up on top. Cool. Oh, it's a dirt leg. That's good. They have a lot of trails to go on, that's for sure. Oh yeah. Let's see. Got my uh, hand slash mini walk. <laughs> mini walk. It does. It is deep. It's like a yeah, like a little mini walk. Yeah. There's, I'm gonna use that for the tea. Okay. Got some little cups. And here's the cool part. So wait, you got oh well, like this is the legit like little Asian tea. Actually, set up camp style. To be truthful with you, man, I got this in a whiskey set. A whiskey set. Okay. <laughs> but, um, I, I take them out here and use it for my tea. You know when like when so you go to the Asian restaurants and you order tea, they have those yeah those little tiny yeah. like cups. That's what it reminds me of. I mean, it's perfect for the occasion. Check this out. You'll like this. <laughs> what? Get out of town. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, Aaron's actually used to doing Catch and Cooks. Um, Darth Maul style. <laughs> <laughs> he does. His, he said he and his brothers have been doing them right out here at this very river uh, for a long time before. Got a couple okay, of little bowls for today. soup. Nice, nice. All right, guys, catch of the day. So we have a couple of small trout there. And remember, we're fishing really small uh, streams, so we didn't expect to, like, you know, just catch a bunch of whales out here. But So we are actually very happy with that. We had a like the third fish. We tried so hard, like a third rainbow or something like that, but just didn't come together. But we have all of our mushrooms here. Oh, we got a crawdad. Look at him. He's already... They're both on the loose. What's up, buddy? You been snacking on mushrooms? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. oh, there he goes. Both of them went under the frying pan. Oh, well, oh look, he goes oh. out. Oh, oh, there they go. They're making their <laughs> They're getaway. They're escaping. <laughs> little crawdad, little... Oh, yeah, see. Yeah, I see you. These guys are tricky. They know what's up. They know what's up. Oh, he almost got me. You know what? Let's put these guys in this big pot so they can't all right, excellent. We have something unfortunate here. The puff balls, I think, are old. Aaron's gonna cut one open. Ah, uh, it's black, guys. It should be white. It should look like a marshmallow. Yeah, all these guys are also yeah. black inside. They look a little darker than the ones I ate, guys. If you remember, I have an old video where I actually ate puffball mushrooms, and they were, it, they look like mushroom, uh, marshmallows inside. And these are black. Dang it, they're old. Oh well. Try again next time. Maybe they can spread some spores right here at camp. Hey, yeah, just. <laughs> you know, Aaron did say that. Um, he says one thing that's good about walking around with a mesh bag of mushrooms is it spreads the spores all along the trails and stuff like that. And that's probably why we found so many um, right along the trail. There we go. Mm -hmm. All right. On the first thing here, got a little water boiling for for tea. You said. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. We got some organic oolong tea. Oolong tea. Hmm. And then, ladies and gentlemen, I have my uh, little mushroom book here. And uh, we're going to see what these little things are. All right, guys, according to this book here, that um, so it's talking about a type called bear's tooth. And it mentions coral mushrooms, but it says a lot of the coral mushrooms, or some of them, can be poisonous. Um, corals should be avoided until one learns which are edible and which are poisonous. And um, okay, well, I was hoping you'd kind of tell me, but this is not a comprehensive book. This is just like the most popular, so apparently we don't have the coral ones in here. There you go. We'll throw these out since we're not sure which ones these are, but maybe we'll... I'd hate to think that later on some mushroom hunter's going to be like, oh, those were great ones. But, oh well. Get that tea steeping. Mm -hmm. Put two bags in there and make it nice and strong. That's Aaron's philosophy on the Japanese tea. 
Okay, so you've just added some um, more water. What do you do with that water? Is that the soup base? This we're going to cook the noodles with, okay. and then once the noodles are done, we're going to take them out, and I'm going to put them back in cold water, so that way they don't overcook. And then uh, I'm going to fill that back up, make the soup base, cook the eggs and the crawdads, um, and then we'll fry the fish up while everything's warming up. So you drained the noodles, and now you're mixing the cold water, huh? Uh-huh. That'll just keep them from overcooking. Oh, okay. Cool. And then once we uh, get the soup base and everything made, we'll just dump the soup right on top of the noodles in the bowl. Okay. And it's ready to go. All right, guys, so I have some of my first cast seasoning. Link in the description. Um, and Aaron, this is for you. Thank you so much for being Thanks, my man. guide today. Yeah, man. Um, Thanks for having me. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I brought you some stickers. Appreciate that. Actually, Justin from the Big Kabari made this one for our little group on Instagram, the Fixed Line Freaks. Okay. Follow that hashtag if you want to. All right. Big Kabari. That's my buddy Justin. Nice. And actually, the fly I was fishing with today is from Nick at NorCal Tenkara. Okay. And, all right, guys. And, uh, Speaking of Instagram, I'll put a link to Aaron's Instagram in the description and your group. Your If you guys want to learn more about this cool fishing, I'll put a link to that in the description. Tinkara? We all do Tinkara. Um, tin well, there's a couple of us that aren't really doing Tinkara yet, but uh, they're still in the group and they're definitely going to try it. Uh, they do all types of fishing though. I mean, it's but not it, just fixed line. Okay, okay, but it's big in Japan. It's a, because I, I yeah. think that most people watch this, you, you've never seen this before. I know I've never seen this type of fishing um, where it's like high tech. Yeah, so it's kind of like a flower rod mixed with a cane pole. Yeah, yeah. You will. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, anyway, if you guys are interested in that kind of fishing, I'll put a link to it in the description and uh, you can learn more about it. Okay, I think okay. we can take this stuff off. So, of you put the eggs in there and the crawfish. Yep, and, and that's the soup base. This is our soup base, yeah, so. Cool. What I'll do, I can go ahead and dump this hot soup base on our noodles that weren't fully cooked. And then while we're cooking the mushrooms and the fish, those noodles should be nice and done by the time we get all that. All right. That is so cool, man. Guys, I can't believe we're eating Japanese food on a kitchen cook. Like, all kinds of new stuff today. So when did you get into Japanese cooking? Um, Like, is it a new hobby or are you like, oh, I've done this for a long time? I've really always just kind of enjoyed cooking in general. Okay. Um, I don't know. Uh, Asian cooking just intrigues me because I'm really into the whole Asian style of everything, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. I can tell. Wow, you're opening it up already, huh? Oh, yeah. We're going to use the... All right, guys, I didn't, I didn't... I'm letting Aaron make all the decisions, but he's going to use some of my first cast seasoning. I'll season oh. up these fishy boys. All right. A little butter in the pan. All right. Mushrooms All right, in. mushrooms going in, guys, in the butter. Sea of butter there. That <laughs> catching our own mushrooms. I don't know if I let you smell these. To me, they kind of have like a slight citrusy smell. Yeah, they do. Huh? That's not. Still kind of earthy, but they do have a slight citrus kind of smell to them. That is so interesting, and they look like it too. That bright orange color, like they'd have that. Yeah. Like they smell exactly how they look, guys. Basically. All right, season these bad boys up. Head and all. Head and all, guys, and they're that small. And they have some bones in them, but a lot of times, if you cook them, that you actually cook the like the bones just disintegrate. And so, you know, not the spine or whatever, not the main bones, but all the pin bones are disintegrate. You don't even notice them. You just chow right through them. They become just like the meat. Ah, soy sauce. Great value. It's not kikamon or anything, but it'll do. Mm -hmm. All right, we can probably throw the big boy on first. Okay. This will take a little bit longer. Fish going in. On a nice low heat, and he's cooking it in that buttery sauce there. Baste him a little bit so he cooks a little more evenly. Yeah. He's cooking it just real slowly, folks. Just nice and nice and easy, low heat, and we're adding. Go ahead and take our little rainbow. Rainbow there. Add him to it. Man, dude, that smells so amazing. 
right there. Put a little bit more butter and soy sauce in there because it's, we don't want it to burn. Mm. You add butter like I add butter. Of course, nobody can uh, can outdo fisherman's life. But, uh, oh no! <laughs> no, <laughs> he's the king of butter. He'll use the whole tub. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I do that perfect. And that's gonna prove. Ooh yeah. <laughs> Mm. All right, the fish is officially, oh fish, get it, officially done. <clears throat> Sorry guys. Uh, we've got, dude, that is like perfectly cooked. Look at that. Mmm. I'm excited. My mouth is watering. And we still have to soup. And, you know and oh, yeah, that's a good idea. The the, uh, the butter on there, drizzle it right over top. This is so weird, guys. I'm used to knowing what's going on, and I have no idea. I don't even know what kind of dish we're after here, so this is all brand new. Cut the hard-boiled egg uh, in true Japanese style. Yeah, I can tell you've done this a time or two. <laughs> I'm, I could not catch any more crawdads, guys. It was hard. The water was so low. Hard to find them. But we at least got to. A little color there. Nice color. Now, we got a seaweed. Aaron was telling me earlier, guys, he's a big fan of Outdoor Chef Life. Who, if you guys are not curious, you don't know who that is. He, he like, really knows how to cook. Um... He's an actual chef, unlike me, I just make basic stuff. And Aaron loves watching him. Oh man, this is legit right here. Oh, this is... And the mushrooms. <laughs> nice. I feel like I should pay you for this, you know, getting this kind of a meal, like restaurant-style meal. <laughs> nah, man. Nah, I'm, yeah, I wouldn't, but just like, <laughs> it looks restaurant-worthy. Like, you'd pay a lot at some Asian restaurant for that. And a little, is that is that some sort of hot sauce? Chili oil. Chili oil, huh? Give it a little color pop. Okay, now, can I just see that people be curious yeah. about Guys, so we got chili oil. Li, li kum ki. And here is the final presentation, folks. We got tea, we got trout, and we got Japanese soup. Appreciate this, man. This is cool. This is cool. Oh, dude. <laughs> All right, I think we should try the tea first. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. That's good. I already knew I'd like this. Because when I go to um, Asian restaurants, I already actually get Asian tea, so. Mm. Love me some tea. Mm. So, I think we should start with the mushrooms. Well, now with a soup like this, do you just mix it all together? No, I usually kind of, I like to have it nice and neat, but I'll, I like to get a little bit of everything. Okay. Mmm. 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 It's hard to say anything, but mmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I almost want to just eat all the mushrooms first. Yes, really. <laughs> Guys, the chanterelles, they're just amazing. They're buttery. But they're not an overpowering mushroom flavor. I actually don't like some mushrooms. I think our butt mushrooms are the ones that are, well, they're so earthy tasting. Mm. These, the flavor of them is subtle. Yeah, I'm not a fan of all the store-bought mushrooms like portobellos and, mm. like you said, the buttons. Just don't like them. Mm -hmm. But wild mushrooms, this soup is so good. Nice so do you chunky. take the seaweed and just like dip it in and just eat the seaweed? I just kind of eat it with the noodles or... Okay. Sometimes... It will get soggy really fast because it absorbs water. Mm -hmm. But um, sometimes I'll just take a, a sheet and just kind of like crumble it over. Just have a bunch of little flakes in there. Uh -huh. But Dude, the seaweed's for, good. For Guys. presentation's sake, little sheets. Okay. The seaweed tastes really, really good. I did not think... I was almost like... I thought that was kind of there for just garnish. I love the seaweed. Man, I wish we had more of those chanterelles now. <laughs> Me too. Dude, I could eat like three pounds of those in one sitting. Oh, I think so. So the mushrooms, 10 out of 10, guys. 10 out of 10 for the mushrooms. So now let's try our trout we caught. I don't think I've ever eaten a brook trout before, so. Mm -hmm. I just take them just like this. Okay, just grab them. 
Just bite in. It's like a cob of corn. Cob, cob of corn right here, folks. The trout. Here we go, first time tasting brook trout. Oh, that's good. Hmm. I want you to be able to enjoy that one. Dude, the trout is 10 out of 10, too. I'm not kidding you, folks. Mm. This was an amazing meal. Oh, you gotta try the cheek meat. The cheek meat? Oh yeah. Okay. That is you know what? the absolute best. All right, so Aaron's gonna show me, he said there are big cheek, there's a bunch of cheek meat on a brook trout. Oh yeah, there it is, it's a little medallion right there. Sure enough. Tell me that right. doesn't taste like scallops. Dude, that's cool. Little tiny trout cheek. No joke, this is, I really can't say it's the best trout I've ever had because I've had so many trout, but it's definitely the top three best trout I've ever had. This this one sitting on the plate right here. That little cheap meat, that's so good. Dude, 10 out of 10, appreciate so. you. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed hanging out with us today. Aaron, appreciate yeah, everything. That was a blast. Sure. Guys, check out his uh, Instagram group if you want to get into this kind of fishing. I forgot what the name of it is again. Fixed Line Freaks. The Fixed Line Freaks. Check them out. Thank you guys for hanging out. We'll see you in the next one.